Take a look into the education offered by AMSN. This series highlights the highest ranked poster presentations from our 2015 annual convention based on topic, creativity, and value to you as a med surge nurse. Look for more of our poster presentations on AMSN's YouTube channel. My name is Heather Helton, and my name is Valerie Short. We are clinical nurse leaders at Carolina's Medical Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. We will be discussing how we are squashing the superbug today. The superbug has been making headlines and is described as a deadly bug creating public fear across the nation. The superbug, better known as carbapenem-resistant intrabacteraceae, or CRE, was first discovered in 2011 in a group of patients at the National Institute of Health Clinical Center. It quickly spread to 18 patients, killing seven. Since this discovery, many news stories have highlighted these infections across the nation. In 2013, CRE was discovered at Carolina's Medical Center. The facility quickly put in measures to control the spread of CRE. Intrabacteraceae bacteria is normally found in the intestinal tract. Some bacteria develop resistance to carbapenem, and CRE is easily transmissible through contact. CRE is a major threat to healthcare facilities. The risk factors for CRE include organ or stem cell transplant, extended length of stay, ICU stay, long-term care facility exposure, presence of invasive devices, and exposure to antimicrobials. Treatment for CRE is limited. People with CRE infections will require treatment with antibiotics. However, the options are slim. Some individuals who are colonized with CRE, meaning they have resistant bacteria without producing an infection, do not require antibiotics. CRE strands that are resistant to all antibiotics have been reported. CRE is especially detrimental to those who are immunocompromised, surpassing mortality rates of 50%. Carolina's Medical Center initiated standards recommended by the CDC to prevent the spread of CRE. All CRE patients are cohorted to select units. These patients are placed on contact isolation with large signage and a warning stop sign to remind staff. Dedicated equipment is also required for these patients. Hand hygiene and PPE compliance is strictly observed by certified monitors. In-services were provided to the staff by infectious disease experts on CRE, hand hygiene, and proper PPE. Patient education leaflets were developed to aid in education on CRE and emphasized hand hygiene. A medical director-led antibiotic stewardship program was developed. The program includes physician notification, reminding them to narrow the use of antibiotics. An infectious disease pharmacist was added to the interdisciplinary rounds in the intensive care units. CRE screening was initiated for early detection. These are rectal swabs that utilize TSB broth with ertapenem. All at-risk patients were screened upon admission. Cohort units screened all non-CRE identified patients weekly to ensure transmission is not occurring. CHG bathing was identified on all CRE patients and on all at-risk patients, including transplant and patients with invasive lines. To increase compliance, we now bathe all patients with CHG. Environmental cleaning was enhanced by using an ultraviolet light disinfection system. Educating patients, families, and staff is imperative to improving hand hygiene and PPE compliance. The development of cohort units with designated staff streamlines processes, improves continuity of care, and increases rapport. In the future, it is expected that the cohort units and early identification of CRE patients will also help to decrease the incidence of CRE hospital-wide. This has been a presentation of Squash the Superbug. Thank you for listening. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the other great education AMSN offers by visiting the addresses on the screen.